And I think most of your casual fans are not going to think too much about it. But simple plays like that, stepping up in the pocket, like I said, climbing up, making the right read, the right throw, it's overlooked. One underlying thing that I pay attention to when I evaluate these quarterbacks is their velocity and zip on their passes. Not a video I expected to make today, but here we are. And I think what Arch Manning did today, it's worth talking about. For those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about to the slightest of bits, Texas, they had their spring game today. And let me give you some brief context and perspective here before we dive into things. I myself am a person who doesn't really care about spring games too much. To go on top of that, I try my best not to overreact to them. And number three, I take everything I see in those spring games with a grain of salt. Unless something crazy happens in a spring game, which happened today, we're about to get in that in just a second, I'm not going to talk about it too much or even think about it twice. For example, we didn't even make a video talking about the Alabama spring game, and I even had some of you guys coming up to me in public saying, yo, Matt, where was the A-Day video? You didn't even have a reaction for it. And just like I told the people in public that asked me that question, I'll tell you guys the same exact thing. I get it. Alabama's got a new head coach. Before their spring game, A-Day game, whatever you want to call it, there's not too much to say, and it's hard to evaluate. It's the definition of a double-edged sword, because if your offense is going out there and balling out, yeah, that's great, but oh, well, does that mean our offense is really good, or does that mean our defense is really bad? Vice versa. If your offense is struggling, does that mean the offense sucks, or does that mean the defense is really good? You're going up against yourself. The season's five or six months away. The only thing that's really interesting in spring games to me, and it's been this way ever since I've been keeping up with college football, are quarterback battles. With that being said, some of you may remember, after Alabama's A-Day game last year, yes, I had a reaction, and some could even say I overreacted, but that's because the quarterback play was horrific. Jalen Milrow had a couple interceptions. The backup quarterback had a couple interceptions. It wasn't pretty. I don't even think a quarterback in that game completed over 50% of their passes. But it goes back to this. I wasn't really reacting so much to the spring game. It was more so of the quarterback battle. Getting that out the way, though, and moving along here to our main subject and main topic of this video, Arch Manning, he played a few hours ago as when I'm speaking and making this video. And guys, I really don't want to overhype this. I don't. But it was unbelievable. I mean this when I say it. And if you watch what I watch, you most certainly, to a certain degree, got to be in the same boat here. I couldn't even fathom that was the same Arch Manning that I saw last year. Compared to the spring game last year, it was a complete 180, night and day difference. I'm going to break down some of his throws, some of the plays in just a second, but good gosh almighty. The thing that stood out the most to me was, number one, his pocket presence and how smooth he looked. And when I say smooth, let me dive into deeper detail on that. Last year, and we see this with a lot of rookie, or not rookie, but freshman quarterbacks and even sophomore quarterbacks, they always, as soon as there's a tiny bit of pressure, they run right, they try to escape the pocket, their feet are always moving 24-7. They look nervous out there. You can see it on the television screen. And last year with Arch Manning, like any other freshman quarterback out there, we saw that. But in this spring game, granted, I'll even tell you right now, take it with a grain of salt, but he looked much better and much improved. He was in rhythm. He was in control of the offense. I wouldn't go as far as just saying he looked like a seasoned veteran out there, but he looked like he knew what he was doing. Before I get into these highlights, in the first half, take a look at these numbers. 11 for 13. Not too shabby. By the way, one of his receivers, I can't, was it Isaiah? Yeah, it was Isaiah Bond. He dropped a touchdown at the end of the first half. Nearly 200 yards and two touchdowns. And oh yeah, I got to bring it up. Seeing Isaiah Bond in that Texas uniform, scoring touchdowns for him, Made me kind of sad, man. It was a bittersweet moment because I want to see him succeed, and I was happy for him seeing him score those touchdowns and make some great catches. But at the same time, it hurt seeing him do it in a uniform other than Alabama. Let's break down some of these plays, though. At the end of the first quarter, his first touchdown pass, it wasn't the pass itself that was great because the wide receiver, he was wide open, but it was where the pass went. He led the receiver in stride. A lot of times at the collegiate level, you see these quarterbacks, they'll underthrow him, overthrow him. Nope, wasn't any of that. It was perfect. His second touchdown pass of the day, he climbs up in the pocket. You don't see that a lot with a young quarterback. You can't emphasize this enough. Most of them, they like to rely on their feet. So they don't climb up in the pocket. They scramble to their right if they're right-handed, left if they're left-handed. He didn't do that. Stepped up. Hit the receiver in stride, touchdown. My apologies, I said receiver. It was actually the running back, and I'll show it to you right here. It was an HB angle route, killed the linebacker on the play, easy touchdown. And I think most of your casual fans are not going to think too much about it, but simple plays like that, stepping up in the pocket, like I said, climbing up, making the right read, the right throw, it's overlooked. What made Tom Brady the greatest of all time isn't because he could throw the ball the farthest in the NFL, isn't because of how strong his arm was, 
It was how smart he was and how accurate he was on those 5, 10, and 15-yard passes. you got to dink and dime your way down the field. Sure, it's awesome and fantastic if you can throw the ball 80 yards, but it doesn't amount to a hill of beans if you're not accurate and if you're not a smart quarterback and if you don't make the right reads. Oh yeah, speaking of dinking and diving your way down the field, to end the second quarter, basically a two-minute drive, that's exactly what he did. It wasn't these long and fancy throws. He was hitting all the 10, 15-yard passes and slowly got Texas in position to kick a field goal or potentially have a touchdown. And like I said, to end the second quarter, he did have a beautiful touchdown pass to Isaiah Bond, but he dropped it. So Texas, they had a, well, of course, both of them are Texas, but you get what I'm saying. Arch Manning, the offense, they had to settle for a field goal. One underlying thing that I pay attention to when I evaluate these quarterbacks is their velocity and zip on their passes. And when I say that, I don't mean, oh, I want to see them throw it 100 miles per hour every single time. No, 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 no. What I'm more so of saying is when you need to put the zip on the ball, can you do it? And when you need to take some zip off, can you also do that and find the right balance? For example, if you have an out route with a safety over the top and a corner underneath, you got to throw it in there with some zing. On the contrary, if you have a running back who's running an HB angle route like we saw earlier or an HB wheel route, Steve Sarkeesian loves those, you don't want to throw it 100 miles per hour. You want to loft it there, put some air under it. And from what I've seen up until this point with Arch Manning so far, I would say he has the it factor, but that shouldn't shock you or anybody. He's a Manning. Some people in his life, they have it. Manning, he's one of those. His final touchdown pass of the day came when his team, the white team, they were trailing by one point, 28-27. Isaiah Bond, he beat his guy off the press coverage. Like I said, he lofted it in there. He put some air under it and let Bond run under it, and he ran it in for, what was it, I believe it, 80 yard touchdown and before we go any farther i want to clap it up clap it up clap it up clap it up to the young man arch manning heck of a performance in the spring game and i know what all you about to run to the comment section and say well matt earlier you're talking about you don't take this spring game seriously you take it with a grain of salt and i do but and i have a really big butt you better believe this if he would have played awful in this game you know dang well what the storyline would have been oh yeah arch manning is he a bust this guy's awful, and yada, yada, yada. And more than likely, we would have talked about it if he would have played awful, but that's the difference with me on this channel. Yes, I'm going to critique these players, I'm going to criticize them to the max, but also, I'm going to give credit when it's earned. Or That's not even how the saying goes, Matt. It's credit when it's due. There we go. Great game from Arch, and this also makes me happy because it shows you what can happen if you stay down and work hard at a school, even though you're not the starting quarterback. It seems like all the time we're talking about the transfer portal and how starters are leaving left and right. So it is kind of a fresh breath there when you see a guy like Arch Manning not dip and leave when he's not immediately the day one starter. I also firmly believe that stems from his family bringing him up the right way. Say what you want about the guy, but he was raised right. Now getting all that out the way, before we end out this video, we gotta address this, and I've already seen people talking about it. Oh, is this gonna be a situation like with Spencer Rattler and Caleb Williams at Oklahoma? I've seen so many people already spinning the narrative that Quinn Ewers He's going to be under a ton of pressure this year because Arch Manning, he's going to be right behind him. Look, I'm going to say this right now to anybody that's even thinking about that. Number one, don't even think about it. But number two, there is no quarterback competition. This is Quinn Ewer's ball team. As much as I like Arch Manning, I think he's a really great prospect and I think he's going to be a good quarterback whenever he is eventually the starter. Quinn Ewer's, he's above him and I don't even think it's particularly close. And even trying to state that there could potentially be a quarterback battle, I think that's disrespectful to Ewers. Maybe that's because I've been high on Ewers ever since he was coming out of, I believe it was South Lake High School in Texas, but I love me some Ewers, man. He is one of the best quarterbacks I've ever seen. Ewers is nothing short than flat out amazing. Every single time I watch him play, I try to look for something he's not good at, but I can't find anything. He's good at everything. There's many more things I could say. I'll end out the video here. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh, well, I'm gonna...